Today we're in the computer, in my office, we're going to do a Star Wars fan film, FAQ 101, with a Star Wars fan filmmaker. Let's get into it. Hey, how's it going? Anthony Farrell here at Crate Sci-Fi. Today's very exciting. Today we're in my office. We're not in the shop, right? We're in the mind place, right? This is my mind shop. And when I'm working on films, this is this is where I do it. So today we're going to do a Zoom interview. We're going to speak to uh, Raymond Matamayor. He's a Star Wars fan filmmaker. I've met him on the circuit. <laughs> like, I've been in a few festivals uh, with him. And we were on a panel together at Geek Fest. And, um, you know, he specifically only does Star Wars fan films. So now that I'm gearing up to do the Mandalorian Star Wars fan film, I thought, well, all right, I need to speak to Raymond. And, you know, you always want to talk to people that have the experience, right? It's going to save you a lot of time. And we don't have a lot of time. We don't have a lot of money. So it's like invaluable, this resource of people that have been there before you. So we're going to ask him some, you know, one-on-one stuff and some questions that, you know, I have. And I think that, you know, the main thing with talking to people like this is they're, they're going to share with you things that they've done that were sort of, that didn't work. And then you don't have to make those same mistakes again. And then, you know, probably you're gonna get some great advice that you ignore. <laughs> and then when it's all done, you're gonna say, oh, I should have listened. <laughs> but about to jump on a Zoom call with him. But before I do that, I just wanna just say that, you know, this is a coffee talk. This is me with the person that I met. And we're just gonna talk about like Star Wars fan films and the do's and don'ts. You know, this is not an official, sort of uh, statement about these things. It's just two people talking. Take it with a grain of salt. Um, I think it'll be useful information, but you know, just note that it's not the official information. It's just two people talking. But having said that, let's jump in. I'm gonna call up Raymond. <laughs> All right, so today's very exciting. We're gonna do a little Star Wars fan film, FAQ 101. Just uh, let's, you know, figure this out. And uh, today we're very, very lucky. Uh, Raymond Montemayor, uh, Star Wars fan film extraordinaire. Um, I've been in a few, uh, well, one festival twice with Raymond. And just if I think of fan films, I, I think of Raymond because, you know, they're exceptional. But also he's done them a few times. Uh, you know, I'm going to send you to his website. Bunch of awards, a lot, lot of laurels in the in the Star Wars fan films and uh, recognition from the actual like top of the mountain. Right. Like so it, the Star Wars, I guess, like official fan films. Right. And he'll, he'll tell us more about that. So uh, I'll, I'll let Raymond introduce himself, talk a little bit about his background, and then we'll get into like the, the 101. Uh, Raymond, again, thank you for for talking to us. Thanks, Anthony. Appreciate you having me. Um... So a little background, um, I uh, started off my career actually in engineering. I was an electrical engineer for about 12 years. Uh -huh. And uh, after I had my first daughter, uh, my wife and I decided I, maybe I should do something different and I was ready for a change. So I, I got into uh, motion graphics and I started a freelance business doing motion graphics. Eventually I got into visual effects and I've been doing uh, for about the past eight or nine years, uh, motion graphics, visual effects, animation, that kind of stuff for uh, commercial and corporate work and indie films and my own personal projects. And for about the past five years, I've been doing my own Star Wars fan films on and off uh, to continue learning about visual effects and filmmaking in general, and uh, just trying to grow in that, that area, trying trying to get more experience and uh, hopefully get better over time. And yeah. I'm on my, on my fourth film now. That's amazing. And, and it's like, and, and you know, I talk about that a lot and you're a perfect example of that, of like the whole DIY thing. Like I think people get passionate about ideas, but they don't really <laughs> like DIY is do it yourself. And I think like you have to lean into what you're doing and by, you know, learning that you're a motion graphics person and, um, I should mention your your the core of your fan films are is like stop motion animation, right? Which I think is is maybe the 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 molten center of of DIY, right? It's like 
you know, you're, you're, you're taking the toys and you're stop animation. Like there's no excuse. You know, if somebody looks at your work or talks to you, it's like, you know, what's your excuse? Like you can do it, you know? And I think your motion graphics background probably led, um, I'm assuming, but I, I, I'm, I, I'm asking you that because you did that. Did you say like, okay, how can I translate my job into like something that I'm passionate about? Right. So yeah, actually, uh, since I was uh, a little kid, I always wanted to do uh, something Star Wars and work on. I always thought, oh, when I grow up, I want to work on a Star Wars film. Right. You know, that's kind of like, yeah, like uh, high, ex high goals, yeah. high expectations. Uh, for myself and uh you know getting to that point is you know uh yeah it, it seems impossible when you're a kid and sure and i i took my energies down a different path doing engineering but i eventually kind of came back to the creative side uh, um but yeah it, it was uh so like all that kind of the star wars fandom stuff came well before like deciding to go into to engineering, I mean, sorry, into motion graphics, but the, the motion graphics that kind of gave me a path to do something Star Wars film related yeah. in, in the Star Wars fan films. So, so it was great to like, um, to get into motion graphics and it, and that like is a, a doorway into visual effects. And that was what kind of my, in, in terms of filmmaking, that was the thing that I was most interested in learning right, about right, and, right, and doing. Right. Uh, so that was a great, a great uh, path to, to get into it. And uh, yeah, so that, that, that was kind of the route it took. And, and the opportunity to make my first Star Wars fan film came about when Disney decided to resurrect the Star Wars fan film awards after they, right, um, right. after they bought Lucasfilm and then they were getting ready to, to kick off uh, their first Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens. Right, right. And, and they announced this uh, Fan Film Awards in 2014, and it was going to coincide with um, their first Star Wars celebration in Anaheim, uh, which for people watching that don't know what Star Wars celebration is, it's basically Lucasfilm's version of Comic-Con for yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it, it's like, you, you've done it, right? And it's like, it's so valuable, you know, when we get into the questions that, you know, you've gone through the process. And I think what's really important too is that, you know, uh, you know, you see it a lot with fan films, like different things of it, but because you've, you've, and I hope I'm not putting words in your mouth, but you can correct me if I'm wrong, because you've taken it so seriously and you have gone to like the official Star Wars sort right. of contest and the Disney sponsored contest, that's another reason why I think like uh, it's so valuable to to talk to you about this is because you've sort of pressed up against what the limitations are, what you're allowed to do, and 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 that sort of thing, right? And um, yeah, like I said, I'm looking at your site. You have three films, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. The first one is uh, Star Wars Episode Four: A Toy Story that was in 2015. Mm -hmm. I followed that up with. Actually, my, my second and third films, their productions kind of uh, overlapped. And uh, okay. So, but the second one that, that actually came out uh, was in 2016 for Lucasfilm had this, uh, they call it the Go Rogue contest. Uh -huh. So it coincided with the release of Rogue One. So that film is kind of uh, Rogue One centric. Right, 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 right. right. So the Toys Awaken, which is my third one, I actually started before my second one. So I started the Toys Awaken in 2016. And then I, I paused when I realized I wouldn't be able to finish it for the uh, 2016 Star Wars Phantom Awards. Got it, got it, got it. And I later that year, I found out they were doing this Rogue Go Rogue contest. So then I started on a new film uh, for that contest, put the Toys Awaken on hold. And eventually in 2018, I came back to the Toys Awaken to finish that up. And then that one I submitted for the 2018 Star Wars Fan Awards. Um, but yeah. yeah, so three films so far. Yeah, and it's like, you know, I, I just think your films are just a beautiful example of, of also what's possible because it's like they're th fan films. It's low budget, I'm sure. Like you use your own home. Um, right. Your, your daughters appear in them, right? Which 
kind of makes them invaluable to you regardless. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, and then, you know, when you watch them too, like I notice like, you know, you intro, like I, I, I think the one character is uh, supposed to be you, um, but it's played by an actor, right? Oh, um, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah I, ha- I hired an actor to play the dad for my, my but, girls. But he appears in the, all the other films, you know? And yeah, then, yeah. and again, I don't want to give away spoilers, but then it's like, you know, these are DIY fan films, but there's a lot of like thought and effort into them. And I think, you know, the, the couple becomes the parents and the, and the other films. And, and, and my, my point is being, is that, you know, it's all about the, the passion, you know, and then you take the time with these details, these fan films, you do that. And then, you know, we go to your website and I'm, I'm not looking, I'm scrolling down your list of awards. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 yeah. it's passion <laughs> in a re- do you know what I mean? But it's like, I'm not, yeah. I, I you know, it's there, you know, and it's like, I think a lot of that is because it's the, the true sense of sort of that um, DIY. You, you're, you're making it because you love to do it, but also right. doing it right. Thank you. Well, I try, I try. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. All those kind of awards, like it's, it's, it's more of a, an effort on my part to, to get the film out there in festivals so that I can kind of share it with people, with other yeah. like Star Wars fans that, that may enjoy it. And, you know, it's, it's also like uh, going back to the whole family thing. My daughters are in a couple of them and, uh, you know, going to those film festivals with them, it, it makes it a, a, a family thing, you know, something that, that we can experience right, together. Right, right, right. Uh, so it makes it that, that makes it fun as well. And, you know, we've gone to so many film fest, film festivals and like comic cons yeah. um, because of these films. And we really enjoy that experience. So it's, it's great, you know, in that way for, for me and yeah, my daughters. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I remember being on a panel with you and yep. your daughters were right there in the front row. Right. Yeah. And it's like, I have other friends with young children and it's like, they may be not as engaged or get rambunctious, but I think, because they're a part of it, it's probably yeah. more engaging for them, you know? Yeah, and it's, and I also, it's, it's kind of good that, like, I want them to see that they can do something that, uh, that matters to, to some people. Right. And they right. can get recognized for it if they, you know, work <laughs> hard and do something that, that they want to do. Right. And the results can, you know, it can lead them to, you know, different places yeah, in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, and and I think, um, and then now I th- I think we'll we'll jump into sort of like the 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 questions and sort yeah. of the one on one stuff. And like I said, I'm gonna link I'll link to your website and I'll link to your films. I you know I definitely recommend that everybody uh, check out your films. Um, and then um, so we kind of touched on what prompted you to make the film, the films. But um, that, now that you've made three. What, and you go to these festivals, so you talk to things. Is there like a common um, sort of mistake that you think people make when they when they're making a fan film, their first film? Um, so I think the yeah, the, especially for you know for me, what I I think what I when I did it, I I kind of rushed into it because I was trying to meet the certain deadline for the sure, sure. the fan film awards. And I, I didn't spend enough time on the script. I think that's okay, uh, yeah. a big problem that maybe many people doing it for the first time. I do, yeah, the same thing with just regular it's like, films. <laughs> yeah, and like, and you know how it is, you know, like you write the script, but then you're you're a DIY guy, so you're like, I, right. I'm pretty sure you're like me, you're excited to get into the process of making the film. Yes. So yes. so like yes. I, I kind of got ahead of myself uh-huh. and I should have spent more time on the script, yeah. um, especially since it was my first one. And there are a lot of things that, um, you know, after I had finished it, I would have wanted to go back and fix. Um, and if I had done that, you know, from the jump during the scripting stage, it would have gone a lot smoother. Yes. And in fact, like in the last, you know, during this quarantine uh, time, I spent, a, I spent some time actually going back to that very first film 
right, and making right. a, a special edition <laughs> where right. I, I went back and I, I kind of fixed a bunch of stuff that I wasn't happy with. And, uh, in, in, in true Lucas fashion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so definitely, I think uh, if I had spent more time on the script, uh, I could have avoided some of those things. Yeah, and it's and it's 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 funny that you say that because here I am saying like, let me provide this service to myself and people who are interested in this. But as, as you know, people who follow my channel, I've been making this Mandalorian costume now because I'm going to do a Mandalorian right. film, right? And um, I've kind of. I, I live in Southern California, so I've I've got a location. I'm going to do it in the desert, like a western. I've not written nice. it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so right off the gate, okay, note taken. Uh, yeah, let me work on that script. <laughs> and then, oh, and, and yeah, speaking of scripts, so one more thing. So, speaking of scripts, yeah, try and share it with people that are knowledgeable on on uh, on film scripts. I can right, give you right, right, like really right. constructive feedback that I didn't do enough of Just that. Just like so. story structure and, and things yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and then what did you find that, um, and again, it's so valuable to talk to you because you've done three, is is what what was like the biggest waste of time that maybe you did in the beginning that you just don't even do anymore? Oh, yeah. That's a good question. Um, so the biggest waste of time... Yeah, it actually, it, it goes back to, it does go back to the, the uh, script because I, like in a couple of my films, I, I animated a bunch of sequences that were in the original script that when I got down to it, to the final edit, I threw out because it didn't fit. Right, right, right. So and if you so, had edited your script before you yeah, made it. Yeah. Okay, yes, and yes. so, and, uh, doing those stop motion animations, it takes a lot of time and effort. Right, and right, right, and right. a lot of that's just like was wasted because I didn't spend enough time ahead of time knowing that oh, right, I can cut right. this out and right, it would make right. the story flow better. Um, so uh, for, I mean, in particular for me that um, the animation process, a lot right. of it sure. could be wasted if, you know, if I don't spend enough time on the scripting stage. Right, um, you know. And then uh, I would yeah. add to that then too, like, you know, that's the importance I think of a storyboard maybe too, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the kind of dangerous thing with me for me is uh, since I do almost the whole production myself, except right. for the acting, yeah. like I, I have the storyboard in my head. So I, I think to myself, okay, I don't, I don't need to really, right. I know. Right, right, right. Write it down. It's, it's in here and I'm going to do it like, as I'm filming, I know what I'm doing because it's in right. my head. But but it it's a useful exercise to actually storyboard everything out. Right, right. Um, it helps with with everything. So yeah. So so far, two out of two, we're saying like have a very clear idea of of what you're gonna do. Yeah. And then um, and then the other thing is I th we might have touched on this or not, but I'm because you've lots of people like me probably approach you. Is there one thing that um, you find yourself saying all the time when people ask you for advice? Oh, yeah, for fan films in particular, uh, I, I suggest people to try and um, mobilize the, the fandom. So right, if, right. They, if they love Star Wars or some other fandom they want to make a fan film about, they must know other people that are fans of that property too right and it's not that hard to to get people excited to help you like especially if you don't have a budget um you know to help you do something fun to make this fan film and have them be attached to it so like for the toys awaken i had you know that last scene and with all those extras in the movie theater uh -huh, uh -huh. all I was, of those i was just thinking of that and, er and <laughs> yeah. everybody's dressed up i'm sure they yeah did, yeah they so on I, their own right yeah all those folks were different folks from like the San Diego Star Wars Society, the Star Wars Steampunk Universe, the Science Fiction Coalition. Nice, They're all yeah. like fan groups that are based in San Diego that I got to know, um, you know, just through making my first couple of fan films, um, going to conventions and, and meeting, meeting uh, people as I'm screening my films. And so, uh, yeah. And, uh, 
I was able find to find out what your community is wherever yeah, you are exactly. and get involved. Yeah. And that's how I was able to meet a bunch of like Star yeah, Wars fans yeah. that, that were happy to help me. And it was great. You know, I couldn't have pulled off that scene without all those people. It's, it's interesting you say that too, because with my Mandalorian project, it's like I've made a lot of films for a very long time. And I always get people that say like, Oh, I, I enjoyed it. Or, I didn't like that or whatever, but I get the feedback, but I have to say, but it's interesting I, now that you mentioned that I'll take more note of it. Since I've been doing Mandalorian, I'll get specific emails from people about like, Oh, Hey, you know, like I'm in the Mercs or, you know, the, which is the Mandalorian sort of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's like, they're really interested, you know? And it's like, so you're saying like em embrace those people and, and try to be a part of the community and involve the community. Yeah, so that helps you, like, getting it done, getting people to help you out. And then it also, uh, you know, helps, you know, bring in people to, you know, share their fandom and get something to be excited about. And when you're you're all done with it, you have this automatic, you know, um, social media, like, group <laughs> that right, will right, right, want right. to share your stuff. So it's because they're excited about it because they were involved in it. So... Yeah. Um, it, it's a great way to like kind of involve people and then help them help you get get the uh, the word out on your your fan film. Yeah, and and I think too, it's like I've I've you know full transparency. Like I've said this on my channel before. Like I originally started my channel because I wanted to build an audience for the things that I like to make, and nobody's yeah. like searching for what's Anthony Ferraro up to but they might be searching for the things that I do. And I think right. that's really the value of a fan film is that, you know, you have four very successful fan films, right? And I, a lot of people like myself know you from these films. Now, if all of a sudden next year you decide like, you know what, I'm just going to make a film. You're already going to have a larger audience than somebody who's just starting from nowhere. You know what I mean? And you've sort of, um, we're able to exercise. And if you just just keep doing the fan films, that's great too. But you have those people there that are part of your community, I guess. In a right. Sense. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and then, okay. So the, and again, I keep wanting to, to know because of your experience, I think I, and I skipped over this. I wanted to mention in the beginning is, you know, you could, do whatever you want, you know, but if you want to make a film and have it online and audience and maybe participate in these star Wars things, there are certain rules and regulations. Right. Right. And it's like, I think it's worth it. Obviously you do too, that it's like, all right, well, let's work within these parameters instead of like, we're not going to reinvent the thing because Again, you could, but if nobody watches it, like, why, why are you doing this? And you, you don't want to paint yourself into a corner, right? So um, having made th three, is is there certain things now, like when you go to make the next one, that you know you can push the boundaries on, and then certain things that are like, you, you just can't do this ever. Does that make sense? Was that too vague? or? Uh, yeah, no, I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, there's... Yeah, for these Star Wars Fan Film Awards, they, as you know, they set a, uh, set a bunch of very specific rules that they want you to follow in order to participate, which is, which is understandable. Yeah. Um, uh, things like time limit, what music and sound effects yeah. you can use. Um, and like I said, we're, we're, I want to go over those yeah. next. But before we do that, I'm just like your personal experience. Yeah. Is there certain things that you just no, like it, it's just not worth it that maybe you tried to like push the limits and then you had to go back and fix it sort of yeah i mean there's a one really specific thing i uh that happened was for the toys awake and i hired one voice actor his name's kiff vanden heuvel vanden heuvel uh -huh. i think that's how you pronounce his last name sorry kiff if i mess it up um so i hired him to do the voiceovers for the old han solo because uh -huh. we have that old Lego, old man Han Solo right, right, Lego. Right. right. Um, so I found him because he, he actually did the uh, Han Solo voice for um, Lucasfilm has this uh, 
this short series on YouTube called uh, Forces of Destiny. I think you can find uh -huh. it on Disney Plus now. Yeah, but I it's think, like these, yeah, that's how I these like uh, yeah. micro episodes. There's like two minute episodes right. and they're about uh, um, a bunch of characters from the movies. And uh, Han Solo appears in a, a couple of these episodes. And so he does the voice for that. Right. And I, was, and I wanted to get someone that's right, 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 legit right. to do yeah, that voice. Sure. So I, I, you know, I, I asked if he would do it. He, he was like excited to work on it. And uh, we did a whole recording session in LA. You know, I, I, I uh, spend money for, uh, for uh, right, you're going time at, at a, yeah, at a recording a studio. And we did all his lines and everything. And uh, I started to integrate his stuff into my film. But as we read the rules closer, um, one of them was specifically that you can't hire, you, you can't have anyone who is a Lucasfilm employee or contractor um, right, right, right. working on your fan film. And once we saw that, you know, I was like hesitant was and, like, oh, dang. and he definitely was like, oh, sorry, man, I'm out. He has a good thing with Lucasfilm. Yeah, you know, yeah, they, no, that makes sense, you know? Yeah. So, so I tried to push that, but then I, I thought, okay, it's probably not a good idea. That's probably one, one thing right, I don't right. want to like kind of mess with is right, right, right. Is that kind of thing? So, um, yeah, and, I think yeah. It's, no. Go ahead, you and you said and and oh, and uh, uh, and the other thing is uh, that I, I personally don't want to uh, have the headache of dealing with is is trying to fundraise for my fan films. Like actually, right, right, right. yeah. I, I, some people crowdfund and you know, they have the, the guts to do that. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of stay away from that. I just want to be totally clean on like how I fund the film. It's all out of my own pocket because you know, you, yeah. it's, that's kind of a no, no. And, and, and then is the story, it really a fan film at that point? You know what I yeah. mean? Cause I yeah. think I mean, it's a fine line because it's like, you know, people, it's like a fan film is like you're servicing it because because you love it and it's there has to be a purity to that right so when you yeah. start trying to raise money and like hiring like the real actors from the thing which i think they do that in star trek ones quite a bit i've seen it where yeah like somebody who who you're like oh that guy was like on star trek is like a a bartender or something right yeah and and then it's like i mean that's understandable you know what i mean yeah yeah man i can see I you know, I know, I know a few folks that have done some some crowdfunding for fan films, and I can see how I can argue that oh, it's uh, the people that contribute are also fans, and it's you know right, right. It's like your pre-buying ticket or something, you know. Yeah, so like I can I can understand that argument, but I personally just kind of want to stay away from yeah any controversy regarding that. So that's kind of the. The one and thing I, I won't and, do. Yeah, and that was kind of what I what I was asking you because I'm I'm the same way. It's like for me, it's like you know you can't make any money off these, understandably, right? right? So what do you want to do? You want to service the fans and have you know the the fandom Lucas film or Disney, I guess that you're servicing. You, you don't want to rub it the wrong way, you know? What I mean? Right. You want to right. play nice. I think. Um, yeah. So just so then, kind of the answer is. Um, you know, so anything that's like um, anybody who's been associated with it or, or um, and I guess, you know, we'll talk, well, we should get into the, the rules now because then that gets into like music and stuff like that. Yeah. So I just want to just, the, 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 and it could change, but like basically like 2016, 2018, like I'm looking at their rules and regulations. And to be clear, like my thought process is even if I never, send my film to a Lucas fan film. I just want to, you know, uh, cover my butt that like, I, I feel that like, and I guess, yeah, I should be clear about that. My thought process is maybe I'll send to a fan film and there's not even one really officially announced, right. For right. the future. It's just sort of like, let's use this as a guideline to be like, if, if we create our film and put it on YouTube or Vimeo or whatever, Facebook, if we follow these guidelines that have been in place for a few years, we should, nobody's going to be saying um, you need to take that down or blocking it. Right. right. Yeah. So the, that, I think that's kind of the, the safe approach. And 
I know historically Lucasfilm has been really friendly for fan films, even fan films that that haven't been part of the, the Star Wars Fan Film Awards. I mean, there's a ton out there. Right. And they're all still up, like Lucasfilm hasn't yeah, taken yeah. them down. So I think if if you follow the their rules, you should be super safe. Yeah, and I think too, also too, it's like it's in writing, right? So it's like if yeah. there's ever a problem, say like, oh well, I just read here, and you know, so um, you know, so in their part of the core of their rules, like they shouldn't ex- ex- exceed five minutes, but I think that's um, maybe a good rule of thumb anyway. You know, so you want to keep them under five minutes and. Do you just based on whichever one you're doing? Because yours go from like two to five, right? Yeah. So that uh, the Go Rogue film mm-hmm. that was a two minute film, but that contest was capped at two minutes, so I made it for a two minute R- right, right, contest. Right, 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 right. Uh, my very first one was five minutes per the rules, and then the Toys Awaken. The cut I sent them was five minutes, but I have the one I put up on YouTube is actually a and a director's cut that's about two minutes longer. And I, so I added more right, story right. elements into it that just wouldn't fit in five minutes. Um, so, but it's still under I, five. It's well, it's, or it's, it's right actually at five. Is it? It's uh, the toys awaken. The one that's on my YouTube channel now is almost seven minutes. Well, then um, that's, that's a, um, a compliment, I guess. Cause I just watched <laughs> it and it didn't feel, you know what I mean? Oh, it, thanks. It, it's really tight. <laughs> And then, um, but that's so that's a good note too. Is is to keep in mind, I guess, when you're making it that maybe it's going to be versioned out, right? It's like it's like here's my director's cut, you know, that's five or ten minutes. But be, to be aware that oh, maybe you might have to make like a two minute version of this or a three minute version of it. Yeah, for the yeah, it, whenever they hopefully they'll announce another fan film awards at some point, but. Uh, I'm guessing they'll stick with the five minutes, um, the five minute time limit. Uh huh. And so, like when you're writing your film, you'll want to keep in mind that I need a five minute version. So, like for the the film I'm working on now, Home Solo, it's I I wrote it without a time limit. I wanted to write it uh, to tell the story I want to tell, but nice. always keeping in mind that. Eventually, if I want to enter this into their contest, I need a five-minute cut. So I already know in my head I can cut certain sections right, um, right, and right, still right. have the story remain intact so that I can get to a five-minute cut eventually. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. So, um, but also, too, like what we're saying is like you're not making like a, a, a huge, you know, it's a short film, you know? Right, yeah, yeah. Hold on a yeah, Sorry, and for the first time, it. first time fan filmmakers, that five minute limit is actually a, um, to their benefit, because you know you want to try and keep your first one short as short as you can, because um, you could go crazy and write a thirty minute short film and make it impossible to finish. You know, right, um, right, right, right. So I thought I found the five minute limit was kind of helpful for me to actually keep things under control. Right, right. Yeah, because I I I I think that um, it's it's also too right. It's like it's like the attention span is like, I, and I think um, especially too like as people like me and you with DIY experience, also too just budgetary. Not even just the money, but also a lot of DIY is you know I've made films that have gone to festivals for seven hundred dollars, but. If if you did the math of my man hours, it's probably like a thirty thousand dollar film, right? <laughs> right? So if you're like if you're doing motion graphics and a lot of stuff that you know Star Wars because it's sci fi, like the little things, like that takes a lot of time. You know, you could right, right. you could it could take you a year, right? And hold on a second, I lost all my stuff here. Right, yeah. When you're, I mean, you're the same way. You do a lot of stuff on your own, your own editing and shooting and visual effects yeah and yeah all that just adds up in man hours so yeah it could take a long time yeah and then um the other thing is so they talk about like um if you're using star wars stuff that you've bought 
in your film it has to be officially licensed like in your case it's a big deal because you so you're using the toys so you have all like i've seen you use the black series and like the official figures <coughs> excuse me so it has to be the official ones right yeah and then like so for me the question i have is like because i'm building a mandalorian costume i'm not buying a mandalorian costume right so i'm building it is that that's fine, right? Because I know, like you, you dress your daughter yeah. up as Ray in one of them. Yeah, no, there. Well, the the Ray costume was actually a Disney costume. Like I just bought that out of the store. Right. So, but if you're buying it off the rack, it can't be like the Amazon. Right. It can't be like a version from some, like some bootleg thing. It yeah, it has yeah, to that, be the official. Yeah, but you know, there are a lot of the the background players in that movie theater scene. Yeah, they, they made their own cosplay and that was just perfectly fine. And, you know, to be honest, like if if someone bought an unlicensed hat or whatever and they were wearing right. it in the film right, um, or shirt, uh, I don't think the folks at Lucasfilm that are running the contest would like try and spot that and research, you know, is right, that really right. a, a licensed <laughs> product? Yeah, and um, I mean, I, I have to investigate that more, but my thought is like, so I have a, a, a helmet that yeah. is built by a, a, a maker, right? Yep. So I think that's fine, but if I went on Amazon to buy a helmet, it would have to be the officially... Licensed, yeah. I mean, I, that's, I, 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 I don't know, I have to ask more about that, but that, that's that's kind of like something I have to look more into, because I think with yours, it's straightforward, because you're using the toys, right? So it's right. like... I don't know. So yeah, yeah. I think for for the contest, I think they stipulate that because uh, what 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 they're effectively doing is giving you, if you enter the contest, they're giving you a license, a free license to use their IP, and if it's an officially licensed product, they have the trademark on that, so they are allowed right. to let you use that in the film. Right. But like, I mean, it, go to another extreme. You know, if, if someone shows up in like a Superman costume in your film, right, 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 they have no right to let that be in the film. Like they, got you, it, got you it. haven't uh, contacted DC to to allow the use for that in your film, and they're not certainly not going to. So they just want to make sure that everything that's shown on screen is, you know, either you do it yourself or it's it's officially licensed Star Wars merch. Right, 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 right. And, so, and I, I, yeah, and I think, yeah. I mean, I, I think basically the sort of like common sense thing is like, yeah, no, like bootleg things. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that's probably what they're saying is like no bootleg blasters or or off knockoff things. Yeah. But I, yeah, I mean, I, it's so I would try and follow that. But, you know, if there's something here or there that's like kind of, uh, in the shot, but it's not like a main right, right, feature right, of the right, shot. Right, right. You know, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just, you know, as, as much as you can try and stick to right. it. Right. Like if your whole film is a lightsaber battle and the lightsabers they're using are like some off brand knockoff ones that yeah. are clearly purchased. That's, I think it's more like that. Now, now the next thing, this is a big one that always surprises me. Like how, uh, how, especially first time filmmakers, is is the music right so <laughs> so royalty free, free music actually you know now in 2020 it's not a big a deal as it used to be like i have a subscription that i pay <coughs> i use art list there's several of them where mm -hmm. i pay like 200 dollars a year i get unlimited royalty free there's tons of services where you can buy music for 20 dollars and have yeah. the rights to use that song however Specifically in the fan films, they provide specific music for the contest, correct? Yeah, yeah. So they, they have a library of, of music that you can use, that you're allowed to use, and anything else is not allowed. So they just want they want total control on, on that part of the, the which, fan which, film. Which makes sense. And then it's like, just so you know, even though it's a fan film, yeah, you could put, you know, I don't know, you know, ACDC in the background. But that's purely you're going to put it on YouTube, and it's going to get taken down, 
or even if it doesn't get taken down, you're not sending it to a fan film. You're not do you know what I mean? So you just got to be yeah. s- smart about that. And yeah. uh, so my question though, to you, as far as like, for my purposes, so if I'm doing my fan film and I want to send it to the festival, <coughs> the official festival, I have yeah. to use their music, right? Yeah. yeah. But if I'm doing a version just for myself, I'm hoping that if I just use licensed music, that's okay. But maybe I don't want to push that. Um, I'm not sure. Well, if it's licensed music, I mean, just legally speaking, you're you're allowed to use music that you license on your own films, right? But right. When you mix it with the Lucasfilm IP, it gets a little tricky. But I'll just say that the you know of course the versions I sent to them for the contests use all their their music, but the the versions that I put up on my YouTube channel I switched out the music. I mean at at a risk of course. Right. Right. Um, of that being taken down or whatever. Um, uh. Because I like I use actual Star Wars music because that's what I want to use in my fan right, films. Right, right, right. Because um, and so so <laughs> exactly, yeah. It just right, didn't right. feel quite right to me to have the other right. music in there, but uh, uh, and the other music being the music that they provide for the contest, which right, isn't right. the the film music. Right. Um, uh, so so the risk I ran was okay, maybe these films could be taken down from my YouTube channel or right, whatever. Right, I could right, get a right, copyright right. strike or whatever. But yeah, the only thing I found is that the, the music, the copyright holders, you know, put a claim on, right. On right. that, and on you, my films. And, you don't get the film. and then, you know, to be clear as fan filmmakers, there is yeah. zero, you're, you're not making a penny on this. You don't intend to, that should yeah. not even be in your mind. You just yeah. want to share it with people. Right. So, yeah. And, so the, and, the, go ahead. the consequence uh, for like for people that aren't on YouTube, you know, uploading their own stuff, the consequence is that, okay, so the, the music copyright holders can put a, a claim on my, on my video. And so they can monetize my video. Right. Right. Like ads can be put on and, and they get the, the monetization for that. And I wouldn't be able to monetize, but, for a fan film, I'm not monetizing anyway, even if I could, um, because I don't want to like mess with all of that. Right, right, um, right. Because I, it's not my IP. I'm not allowed to monetize, so I'm not going to monetize anyway. So if the only downside is that uh, the music copyright holder puts a strike or like makes a claim. That's I don't care. Right, I'm not right. monetizing anyway. Right, so because just, we like just want to share. Yeah, and, and then um, then the other question that I had was. Um, well, first, so I think it was 2016, 18. I did a lot of research. I dug deep. I, I went really, really deep, and I was able to find the music. But it, 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 the music, and it, it looks like it changes from year to year. So if you go to the active link for like 2016, 2018, it doesn't work anymore. So that means to keep in mind to the people out there who, who are thinking about this, it could possibly change in 2020 so i think one thing i'm getting from our conversation and that i wanted to 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 sort of share is that you definitely should be making these films within the back of your head where okay i might have to swap out this track or i might have to edit it down a minute so it should be uh modular you know what i mean like you should have that in mind when making it and then yep. j- just the only now this is like a personal question that I have is I know they provide like the official like laser blaster sounds and stuff like that but if I want to add my own sound effects that's fine right not not like yeah. a, a blaster mm-hmm. or a, 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 an engine sound but just or do they get weird about that too uh, so they're so they've been kind of um, very s- strict about sound effects. Like uh, when during the contest, the last contest, a lot of people had sent in questions about doing sound, making their own sound effects, and using the sound effects library they provide and the music and what what's what's actually allowed. So 
Um, so what I go by is like, if I'm not using their sound effects, if I do my, my own like Foley, for example, yeah, that kind of stuff is fine. Um, I think they want to stay away from third party sound effects. Right. Where, sure. Sure. Yeah. Even if it's a, like, even if you license those sound effects, right. Which um, I do, but I see, yeah. I guess what you're saying. They want it right They're, But I think they, they only care if it's, I mean, I, I can't say this for sure, but my, my feeling from reading all the comments and the cute questions and answers on this topic is I think they, they want to stay away from people providing their own sound star Wars type sound effects. Right, right, right. But if right, you're doing right. Here, like, here's, here's my, here's my sound of a droid. It's yeah. Like they don't yeah. want it that they, yeah, they yeah. want, this is what a droid sounds like. That makes sense. But I'm, yes. I'm talking about like, right. So I guess I didn't realize what I was asking, but Foley is Foley. Right. So that, that should be fine. Yeah. And then it's saying, um, do not augment any Lucasfilm IP. So that's like, uh, not uh, like they're, you can't make like a pink Darth Vader, I guess, right? Like, well, I think there's, there's, I think in for that, if I remember the rule you're talking about, I think they're talking specifically about like the, the asset library they give you. So like <laughs> this, the music and sound effects. So you can't like do oh, a remix of the audio it, tracks. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it for example, it. I mean, but you can edit them in, in the sense that you can like cut them or fade them from one to the other if you're like changing scenes or whatever, but they don't want you to um, totally change up the music where you're like sampling it and then doing some weird hip hop thing. <laughs> right, uh, right, 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 right. So, uh, and also for the, yeah. Got so I think yeah, mainly yeah, for the yeah. music, for the sound effects, I'm not quite sure where that would come right, in. Right, right. So, uh, so you don't do like a um, sort of a, a dubstep version of. Yeah, exactly. Got it, got it. And then it's saying, People living or dead, toys, costumes. Right. So it's just, you, you have to have people, right. So just a general release. You can't like, your your Star Wars film can't have people in the background that don't know they're in it. Right. Yeah. So, so I got, when I did all my filming, I always had a release, my own release form. Right. That like I had the, people like sign. Like you said earlier, like that theater scene, like all those people in yeah. the movie theater. Yeah, so they all have to sign a release form, and uh, and if your film actually wins, what Lucasfilm does is they send their own release form, even though you have your own set. Right. But they, they want they want right. you to have everyone involved to fill those out. Right. Just, right. Um, and, so as I like to fun. say about rules like that is uh, that's an awesome, awesome problem to have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like if you yeah. have to deal with that. Oh, that sucks. But yeah. Come on. That's awesome. The problem to have. Yeah. And then, um, let's see, you know, nudity that, you know, that makes sense. Um, yeah. what, but, um, as far as like the films that you've seen in your, yours doesn't include it, but I'm sure you've seen other ones. What, as far as, is there like, um, because it's star Wars, right? People are shooting at each other. You just don't, there's never any like, blood hits or stuff in star wars right it's just mm. you know like violence because i know but, for the mandalorian obviously he's gonna be shooting people right just well, I, stay I would away say, from gore i guess right yeah i mean like kind of your standard star wars action violence is i mean sort of like do an that. explosion hit and yeah. like ah you know <laughs> but yeah now that i'm thinking about it like I mean, even like uh, limb, like like uh, cutting off limbs and stuff. I mean, that stuff is in Star Wars. Yeah, right? but it's so, never like. Yeah, it's, not, it's blood. never. Yeah, exactly. It's never too gory. But uh, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of um, yeah, like the Force Awakens, like when he rubs the blood on his thing. That was a little. Oh, yeah. un, that was a little unusual, right? Because it was like, yeah. Wow, I never saw that yeah. before. Yeah, a lot of people make, I mean, my, my fan films are a little bit different, but those that make like in-universe fan films, uh -huh. they have like the typical Star Wars kind of action violence that, you know, and there's no problem uh, with those films being able to win. It's That doesn't deter them from right, 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 from right. being uh, picked right, as Right, because people as are sword fighting and shooting yeah, each other. It's just exactly. not, it's never, 
I, I can't think of any example in Star Wars where it's like gratuitous. I guess that's sort of the, yeah, it's like a lot of it's common sense, but, you know. Um, and then it's saying submissions must not imply any association or endorsement between products and services, right? Mm-hmm. So what does that mean? Should it be like, oh, we're using the new Kenner, blah, blah, blah? Um, I think they, I think they're referring to like, um, more like, uh, endorsement of, well, that's a good question. Cause I mean, like for my films, I like, I use Legos and stuff like that. That's not right. Right. It's, which, which they're in the star Wars universe now anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but I think, um, it's maybe more. They're worried about more gratuitous stuff like uh, if you have like they don't want to see logos from other companies like they don't want to see a Nike logo. Right. In, I was just thinking that. Right, 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 right. <laughs> like, yeah, so, yeah. 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 No, so, that, that so, makes sense. Yeah. Because so I remember in one of my films, uh, White Bad Galactic Galaxy, I just found these amazing like silver sneakers, you know. But I had to like get rid of the logo because it was just silly, like you know, oh, right? like yeah. all of a sudden, like Kylo's running back all in black with like some really dope like <laughs> black Nike, just like yeah, that which you know, as a fan film, that could be fun, right? But it yeah. would just have to be like, oh my god, that's so funny! Like you know, he's got black track sneakers on, right? It couldn't be like, oh, he's got Adidas or Nikes on. It would just be like, yeah, the joke is funny. It's out of context. He has tennis shoes on, but it yeah, just couldn't yeah. be like Chuck Taylors or whatever. Right, right. Okay, and then, um, and then it's kind of saying like, yeah, don't put Superman in there, and um, yeah, and I, and, you know, a lot of it. I think it sounds like it's just common sense, and it also feels like, you know, it's a fan film. It's got, not going to be monetized. It could potentially be taken down. So what I'm really getting from our conversation is like, you know, you got to be respectful and you have to be, I'm just in this moment of our conversation. I think this will stick with me now is it has to be modular, right? It has to be like, I I have this thing that I made and it's five minutes. Oh, I really want to take it to the next level and share it in this festival or whatever. But in order to do it, I have to get it down to this length. So I have to remove this. Or I had this, oh, I really want to submit it to this other festival. I can't use that music. I need to be able to take that out and put something else in. And then, um, because otherwise, you know, if they're like, oh, your film, we have to take it down because of whatever. And all of a sudden I had this, I'm locked into this five minutes. But if it's only being taken down because he's waves around this, this, uh, device in one scene that's not approved and then i lose you know i want to be able to go back and just cut that that scene out yeah 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 that makes sense sorry i'm i'm, I'm having live realizations <laughs> <laughs> and then um so wow super helpful so let me just i want to wind down with just a couple of like anecdotal sort of things like yeah w- once you realize that like oh man i could do this like how did you go about just doing the first one? Oh, so the first one um so i i went about uh the first thing i i had to do was like figure out the story so i i had a like a rough idea but I, in I mind think, but, but i think more i'm like after the like what was the like you know you wake up like today's the day i'm gonna just do it you know what I mean? Like, what uh, was the moment where you're like, you know what? Was it? Did you creep up on it? Did you just like? Oh jump no! Off it the was. Cliff? It was. It was. Uh, it was very sudden. It's like I read about the Fan Film Award contest that was going to be uh, coinciding with the 2015 Star Wars celebration. And then that was the that instant. I said, okay, I need to do something for this because I so, want to. Right. So you found a goal. You found like yeah, a, exactly. a target. Okay, and I didn't know exactly how I was going to do it, but I figured, okay, I, I have a camera I can use. I've got some, some equipment. I know, 
uh, a couple of people that might be able to help me with it. Right, right. And okay, so I'm going to do it. And then I just figured it out kind of uh, as I went along. But you had a target. And let me ask you, that brings up in in all your years doing this, like, is there one sort of main um, chat room or site or group that you sort of go to? You know what I mean? Like Prop Maker, oh. it's like the 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 RPF or or you know what I mean? Like, is there one sort of resource? Uh, that's a good question. There's a few like specific Star Wars fan film Facebook groups that I'm a part of, but I I never really went to a specific group to try and figure out right, how to just gathering. Yeah. So like whatever I needed to learn how to do in order to make the film, I went out and just kind of right. Either if went, you Google like, and then the solution sent you to this group and then, then it ends yeah. up being like, but I guess, so I guess what I'm saying is if somebody's wanting to get started, uh, like where would you go? For, like, I guess film freeway where you just like, how do you know, like, what are the, cause I know like as, I primarily make web series and I know like there's web series. There's a couple of web series yeah. sites that I go to that tell me like, here's all the, the web series festivals worth checking out. Is there something like oh, that for fan films? That's a good question. Um, like for, for film festivals in particular, like what I ended up doing was, uh, yeah, going to film freeway. And then I just searched, Fan film. Fan film. Right. So and that's the answer. Like, yeah. Yeah. All the stuff, all the film festivals that that allow fan films to be submitted, like pop up at the top, obviously. Well, I mean, um, Film Freeway is like pretty much the only game in town now. But yeah. Before then, what I just really liked about Film Freeway, and this is just for people that don't know, Film Freeway at this point is, is the hub. It's the only one. Um, cause it used to be, um, without, without a, box a box yeah, and a couple other ones. So it's just film freeway, but what's nice about it for filmmakers is there's also like a Yelp component to it. Right. So you can see like, you know, if you find like a film festival, that's like, oh, wow, this is going to be perfect for my film. But then it's like, oh, they've only been in business for a year and there's no reviews. Right. 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 But anyway, so to answer that, my own question is. So you go to like Film Freeway, you go fan films, and then you're like, oh, okay, three months from now is this film. And then, okay, now I'm going to, you know, so a target is a, is a motivator. Yeah, and there's there's quite a few that, you know, I, you know, after some experience with submitting to film festivals, I found that there are a few out there that um, probably aren't worth shooting for. Yeah, that, um, yeah that, same thing with me with the web series, like, it's like at first you're like you want to be in them all, then you're like, yeah. uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's like a few really good ones that that uh, if you want to do a fan film, there are a few really good ones that uh, you can submit to. Um, and I, like I said, like if if you uh, when I link to your website, I think you know you could see like about a half dozen or more that you've been involved with that right. are probably worth checking out. Yep. And um. Was there any um, was there any obstacles when you've made your first film? Was there any obstacles in your way that, as you make your third and fourth films, that are no longer obstacles because they were more like mental, you know, sort of you were psyching yourself out from even getting started? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. No, the so the for the very first one, the the big obstacle was like for me it was the stop motion animation because I had no idea how to do it. Right, right. And so I, I limited how much stop motion was in the very first one. Uh, but I, over time I kind of figured out my style and my technique for doing it, uh, stop motion with these toys. And I, you know, got better equipment and I just got better at animating. So that's like not, not an issue anymore. It's like, uh, because a lot of stop motion animation is like, uh, is the DIY thing is like figuring right. out a solution to something that there's nothing that is pre-made that you can just do. Right, like you may right. have to build a certain rig in order to get the shot done. Um, so all that is kind of, I'm more comfortable with. So it's not, so if I can think of a scene that I want to do, 
I'm confident that I'll be able to figure it out. Right, so, right, right, right. On the first one, it was like kind of that was the right. The first the thing one that, was, would, that would shut it all down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I now mean, you're like, I just got to figure it out. Yeah, for the first one, I like I already had experience editing and doing some VFX and motion graphics, and right? Stuff like that. You know, I could get by. Uh, but it was the the stop motion. But now it's and, and, and you had to teach yourself that. And, yeah, and exactly. I could I could tell you, you know, like you nailed it. Like it looks amazing. And oh, thank you. It's like there's yeah. I don't know. I just keep saying this all the time. It's like you know the DIY. A lot of people are passionate about some idea they have, and then DIY is like a a, a buzzword where it's like, oh, I could potentially do that. But they fail to realize, like, do it yourself. Like, yeah. it's like typically, I'm I'm not a kid, right? I'm an older guy. So the reason I have a little bit more knowledge than somebody else is that over the course of my my journey, I have like you know ten or twelve films under my belt, and each film was typically like, oh crap, how do I do this? Yeah. And then you have to learn how to do that. <laughs> and then maybe it's not that great. But by the time you're on your third one, you're incorporating that thing you figured out on the other one. Right, yeah. And it's like, and I find that sounds similar to you, that with DIY, fan film, whatever, it's like the real key is targets, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm a, I've been a professional film editor for 20 years now. And it's because my very first short film, the guy who was editing it was always like, oh, sorry, I can't do it this week. I can't do it this week. Maybe next week. And you know, I just taught myself how to do it, you know? Right. Right, right, right. And then, um, with, and I mentioned, I probably mentioned to this to you off camera, what I love about your um, your first film, again, this is not a, not a spoiler, is that it's, it's okay, it's toy stop animation, which as soon as I say that, people have thought of that. But the eye movements and mouth movements oh, yeah. of yours are really exceptional and that really little bit of extra. And I'm imagining you really taught yourself that in, yeah. in the process of making that film, correct? Yeah, yeah. So that was when I wanted to kind of step up my, my stop motion game and, and do do facial animations for these things. Cause you can, you can find a lot of stop motion animation on like YouTube with toys and stuff, but all but the faces it are static. To be very like almost comical too. Like, ah, ah. yeah. So Yours I try very naturalistic. Yeah. I tried to make it as realistic as possible yeah, because I, I wanted to kind of the viewer to be immersed in this story that these toys are actually alive. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know Yeah, you achieved it, man. Yeah. Having having the facial animations just kind of pushes that a little further. And yeah, I had to like figure out uh yeah, I basically to do achieve that I I I made three D models like using photogrammetry and I didn't know what photogrammetry was, so I just kinda learned right, about right, it. Right, 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 right. And uh then I used uh I use 3D software to to help me animate, and uh, and I'm sure there was a couple to, of weeks of like, how do I do this? And you had to Google yeah. it, and yeah, exactly, yeah. And yeah. then so now I'm like, if I have to make a new facial animation for a new toy, like I kind of have the process down, like the right, way I right, do it. Right. And you probably have so, a couple, you probably have things in the in the in the bank, so to speak, where it's like, you know, like certain um, uh, like stock responses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, uh, yeah, so I basically had to learn photogrammetry and, and some 3D modeling and then 3D animation. Then how do I composite that into my shot and to make it like kind of work right, seamlessly. Right, right. So kind of blending that 3D animation yeah, I, with a stop motion. I love so it's, that. Yeah, Cause that's what it's gets, a lot I'm, of, get, I'm getting excited because <laughs> it's like, that's like my process too, where it's like, you you know we all can visualize it right and then yeah. it's like well, how the hell do you do that yeah and then if you google it there's there's going to be <laughs> there's going to be something, somebody yeah. and, and what's crazy to me too is now it's even gotten to the point where i can find three videos on something that we're trying to achieve but there's going to be one guy or girl that like 
specifically thinking of it the way that you are. <laughs> right. Or using the same exact like software that you just downloaded. And you're right, like, oh right. crap, okay. But I I, I digress. <laughs> so um so just um you know, I want to ask you like um you know what's what's sort of uh what you got coming up and then we'll end there. But before we do that, I just kind of re- want to recap for myself and for people watching that I think the the main thing that we got from this from you is that that you know it has has to be modular, right? It has to be you have to be like you have to have your idea, but it can't be like in stone. You have to be willing or not even willing, but able to sort of swap out music, cut down scenes or or add or re- remove scenes. Um if you are going to use actual Star Wars things that you buy from Target or whatever, you know, for costumes or helmet, it has to be the Star Wars ones. It can't be like the off-brand sort of cheaper version of it. Um, if your if your end goal really is the to go for the the officially licensed film, whatever it is that year, once it's announced, they will provide m- music and sounds that you can use so don't right get and you know and and i guess my my general rule of thumb with this stuff is that you can't don't be a rebel (laughs) you know what i mean (laughs) because you you just want to share these films with so it's like even if you don't intend to do the fan film contest yeah if you follow these guidelines you you could be pretty confident that it's it's not gonna um sort of be taken down or you know because if it is something you love why would you want to offend it you know right and and then the, the the last thing i'll say and i'll actually reiterate this when i when i start the video um when i introduce it is that i uh i went to a few film festivals i met you because we we're at a few festivals together right i'm like oh gosh this you know we're acquaintances and he's very good at this so i'm gonna ask him so we're by no means, this is just where I'm sharing my experience of, of asking uh, somebody who's done this before, but, you know, definitely make your own decisions and check this out. We, you know, we don't speak right. for <laughs> Disney or whatever. This is just more of like, a, we're having a cup of coffee and like, oh, okay, this is good, helpful yeah. sort of uh, information. And then, um, yeah, just you know, if we, if is there anything I didn't ask that you wanted to add? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so, regarding the fan film awards, um, no, I mean, just uh, you know, people I mean, that are watching, they, they meet, yeah, that's my dog. He's there's a no, 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 that's fine. I meant, no, I meant the, the subject is, is a lot. Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, so, for people that are making that want to make a Star Wars, specifically a Star Wars fan film, you know, just know that kind of Lucasfilm is generally like friendly for that kind of thing. They encourage fan films. I mean, historically, George Lucas uh, was a, a really uh, big supporter of Star Wars fan films, and and Disney has kind of carried that on. Um, so don't stress out too much about like following all these rules to right, the T. Right. right. Um, you should be okay. But if you're making a fan film for other properties like a Star Trek or a Doctor Who, you know, you definitely want to do a little bit of research on like uh, people that have done them before and like what, what is kind of acceptable. I mean, like Star Trek in particular, because of, uh, the Star Trek, I think it's XNR fan film that did a lot of crowdfunding, like really huge crowdfunding, like right, six figures right. kind of thing. Right, right. They, they ended up uh, shutting that production down, but the, eventually they came to a, an agreement on like, for anyone that make, wants to make a Star Trek fan film, there's certain rules. Like right, you, you right. can crowdfund, but only up to a certain amount. Right, you can't right. hire Star Trek actors and things like that. So right, definitely right. for for the whatever fandom you want to try and make a fan film for, there's certain specific quirks to uh, to making those fan films that you want to kind of find out about. But for Star Wars, uh, definitely it's it's fan friendly. 
let's put it that way right 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 that's awesome yeah. and then um and then just finally what you know are, are you working on something now or are you you yeah it's, it's a little, yeah there's uh my fourth fan film that that i've been working on it's it's uh so i wasn't specifically thinking of working on another fan film after mm -hmm. the toys awaken mm -hmm. but uh so it turns out so my my oldest daughter malia she was in the toys awaken she was right, the main right, right, character right. there riley right uh, but since we filmed that over the span of like two and a half years uh -huh. she got uh she got too old to film her shots by the end of it <laughs> like to finish those shots so my younger daughter that's Nora. fantastic. <laughs> yeah, my younger daughter Nora, who is two and a half years younger than Malia, she finished up those shots as Riley. <laughs> but she was kind of a kind of a, a double. Like right, right, it wasn't right. her own character. She was like supporting Malia. So right. she wanted to do she wanted to participate and be in another fan film, but have her own character. Right, right. So this next one I, I wrote a character just for her. Right, and that's right. mainly the reason why I'm doing it is like to do another fan film, but so that they can both be in it and have their own characters. Uh, but fantastic. it's called yeah, it's called Home Solo. Um, okay. So if, so think Star Wars meets Toy Story, just kind of like my first three films, right, but right. Meet, meets Home Alone. So there's a the <laughs> the whole Home Alone premise to it. So it's these two sisters that right, are right. at home. Someone's trying to break in, and. Uh, and they have to figure out how to kind of get out of this jam. And of course, their Star Wars toys are involved. Right, and, right, right, right. And but it's really a story about a girl, and she she has a newly adopted sister, so it's, it's a new person coming to their family. Right. So it's right. Uh, so there's like a layer to it. Yeah, just yeah. Specifically for the human characters, and then the the toys come into it, and there's like a a story within the toys that relates to, to this, uh, relationship. So, but it's, it's, uh, so I, I'm, so the way I'm crafting it is to, with the intent to enter it into the Star Wars Phantom Awards, if they, you know, the, when the next one rolls around. So now, when I two, is there somebody who follows that, are you getting an inkling if one's coming up or there's no, there's, yeah, especially there's now that, with the COVID, I guess. Yeah, there's, I haven't heard anything, any news about it. Um, but uh, yeah, so my feeling is for 2020, there's not going to be anything. Sure. And even possibly for 2021, there may not be. I'm not sure. Right. Um, but we'll see. They, they may do one uh, uh, before the next Star Wars celebration, which is in 2022. So maybe right, just right. to fill that gap before celebration right, right. Uh, rolls around again, they might do one in 2021, but I, that's just a guess. Well, this, this brings up another question. <laughs> Sorry. I was about to wrap up, but I have another question. Oh yeah. yeah. Do you, what, what's your feeling that, um, uh, so let's say like, do you know, like, does it have to be exclusive to the festival? Oh, so, um, that's a good question. Uh, so I'm wondering if I roll out, uh, uh, uh Mandalorian, fan film at the end of the year and then in 2021 there's a festival why be able to submit that to the festival yeah or will I have to make so that? there's there's precedent for that so for this last one in 2018 mm -hmm. um, I noticed that a few of the finalists that were in the contest had previously uploaded their fan films to YouTube so they had oh, okay. already finished it yeah they yeah. entered it and they became finalists and I think uh a couple of them actually won this year where their films were already out in the wild. Okay. That's and they, good. and they submitted five minute versions of the, those films with the right, you know, music right, and right. sound effects. Oh, that's and good. They submit, yeah. So I think if you, yeah, if you want to, there's, so there's precedent. So if you want to um, publish your, you know, yeah. your fan film, like now, you know, as soon as you can, and then later on, you want to enter it into one of their contests. Um, you should be okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And then, um, um, so the the home solo, you got that yeah. coming up. And then, like I said, so I'm going to link to. Um, I mean, you have. I'll, I'll link to your YouTube page and your website because your website is is 
there's, there's a lot of information on there. And I think anybody who's interested in that, in, in fan films, even if they look at sort of the history of what you've done, that'll give them a lot of insight of, of where to look. And then, like I said, I highly recommend the films. I'll, I'll link to those. Uh, thank and you. then I, I think, you know, if people subscribe to your YouTube channel, I'm sure, you know, they'll, they'll see when things are coming up. Yeah. And, and probably my, um, my Instagram as, as production starts on home solo, I'll, oh, okay. I'll post stuff there. All right, um, so and I'll, I have I'll, actually, I'll link, I'll link to your Instagram as well. Yeah. And, um, yeah, now that we're thinking about, you know, you mentioned the website, so I was just kind of mentally yeah. flipping through my pages. <laughs> so, uh, I want to, <laughs> uh, maybe mention one thing that, that I've been kind of, that's been percolating in the background for uh -huh. a long time is that like a really huge project that I want to try and get off the ground. It's star Wars related still. Um, yeah. but I want to, I have this like very ambitious goal of making a feature length stop motion film. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, I want it to be a star Wars film. So my, my goal, this lofty goal of mine, uh -huh. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but uh -huh. I'm going to shoot for yeah. it, yeah. is to make a, so, you know, uh, I like a studio, they make all these great stop motion films like uh, Kubo and the Two Strings, Missing Link, Coraline. Mm -hmm. So I want to make a stop motion film in that style, like in the Star Wars universe. Uh -huh. So my goal is to make a film based on uh, Shadows of the Empire, which is, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's a novel that came that, out I don't, I don't in, think so. yeah, it's a novel that came out in 96 mm -hmm. um, as part of the kind of expanded Star Wars universe. Yeah, yeah. And there was like a video game and a comic book series and toys, but they never made a movie on it, obviously. So it tells the story between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Okay. So... Yeah, it's and pretty it's, fertile area there. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not canon anymore. It's 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 part of legends. What they call legends. Yeah. So yeah. so not canon anymore. But <laughs> I always liked that story. Yeah. And I always wanted to see it on the screen. So I want to make a using proper stop motion puppets, not not toys. Right. Right. So proper stop motion puppets and and sets. Uh, bring that to life as a, a feature length film. Um, with the goal of of uh, raising funds for children's charities like uh, Starlight Children's Foundation and oh right 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 and right. Uh, and a few others, uh, so I've reached out to like Lucasfilm Fan Relations to see if I can kind of get it rolling because to get the crowd kind of fundraising thing in place, it requires. A form right, it has to be, it has, it has to be almost like officially not for profit. I yeah, guess. yeah. So <laughs> right, right. So I want to, yeah, I want to kind of go through Lucasfilm fan relations to find a way to be able to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So because I'll need, so the whole goal is to kind of uh, mobilize the Star Wars fandom and get them excited about something that they would uh, want to help uh, raise funds for children's charities and and get something in return that would be exciting for them to watch um, mm -hmm. as kind of a, an extension of like uh, the, the original films, but right, right. no longer canon. But anyway, so, so if you go to my website, if people watching go to my website, there's a shadows of the empire film page that uh, oh, where nice. I kind of talk about that nice. a little bit. Uh -huh. um, so they can learn about it. And then I think I have a, a sign up there for like a newsletter eventually that I, I would um, put out that would discuss yeah, yeah, yeah. that once, once I can get it rolling. So it's, it's kind of a long way off because I'm, I'm still working on home solo. Uh, but after home solo, I want to try and those get goals, that. those targets. Yeah. Yeah. So and I want to sure try and get gonna, that going. That, and, and that's going to be, um, I could see that being a five-year project. <laughs> yeah, it's so I don't know. If <laughs> I mean, I'm from gonna... inception to like exactly boom, which yeah, to so... me that's what I keep trying to promote is like that's a freaking awesome way to spend five years. You know, <laughs> yeah, should be a lot of fun, and I think I'll learn a lot from it, and in the process, you know, help some charities out that that could use some help, and uh, yeah, so it. It, it'll serve a, a bunch of different goals for me. Yeah. But yeah, I figure if, if I'm going to spend my time 
doing these kind of type of fan films, um, which I get a lot out of personally mm -hmm. and like professionally, uh, I should be able to um, give back to like charities that, that could right, use some right, help. Right. And there's a lot of, you know, generous Star Wars fans out there that, that would definitely support children's charities and, you know, something like this, you know, in conjunction. So, um, yeah, 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 right. Like the, like the 501st does like exactly. a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and a lot of these groups are like pretty inspirational, um, you know, the kind of charity work they're doing. So I figure from a fan filmmaker's perspective, uh, I think there's something that that I could do that, that could contribute to, to those causes as well. So, Oh, yeah. that's fantastic, man. Well, you know, Raymond... Uh, I think we'll end on that because that's that's pretty great information. And, and you know, I, I'll have to sign up for that newsletter myself because I want to follow that. Thank you so much for um, giving us your time and answering all the questions. Uh, my um, pleasure. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing more of your films. And um, hopefully, I'll see you uh, soon on the festival circuit. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to to your Mandalorian film. Like. I love the series and yeah, excited to see what, what you're going to do with the film. I mean, the props that you've been working on look great. So right seeing on. that in a fan film should be pretty awesome. <laughs> so looking forward to that. Awesome. All right, brother. Thank you very much. Wow. So glad we really took the time to do that. Really, really awesome of Raymond to talk to us about that. Now, like I said, going to link to his films. You should check them out. And I think that's very helpful. Like I have a better idea of how I'm going to approach this. And, you know, you're always looking for excuses not to get started, right? And if, if I get stuck on, well, should I do this or should... It's like, now I know. I know what to do and I need to get on. So for, uh, for a little while now, we're still going to build the costume. And I think once the costume's done, you know, I'm, I'm going to shoot it in the desert in Southern California. So once the costume's done, we're going to start getting into production. And I'll, I'll bring you along as that happens. So... Definitely, I, I just received the armor, so we're going to be leaning into the armor for a couple more episodes, but we are on our journey. So, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Love to read the comments. And be sure uh, to check out the merch shop. Today I got the black on black hat on. Buying the merch really helps uh, support the channel. And remember, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. ha ha ha!